think I could. Oh. Nah, we'll just leave it. I, I've, I've been going over this, so I don't need that. Cool. So a little right. early, we're going to tell you five minutes. Cool. And then right at the end, we'll wrestle you to the ground. they wrestle me to the ground. I mean, in okay. a positive kind of way. You got it. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Good to go. All right. Hi, I'm uh, I'm Jonathan Myers. I'm a security student here at RIT. Uh, over the years, I've been heavily involved with our clubs on campus as well as the competitions and everything. Um, over these years, I haven't really found a specialization for myself in security. Uh, don't really identify as a pen tester, incident response, SOC analyst, nothing like that. Uh, and I've kind of taken a liking to just being able to do something brand new every single day. And uh, along my journeys, I. Uh, I uh, stumbled upon uh, machine learning and uh, got pulled into that uh, train because, uh, you know, buzzwords. And uh, so we had a professor on campus by the name of Heim Sanders. He gave a presentation a bit earlier. Uh, he had done a lot of work with uh, artificial intelligence and uh, neural networks. And I was like, oh, this is a great source. So I came to him. And I was like, here's my ideas. And he's like, ah, that's, that doesn't work the way you think it does. Uh, go back and try again. So I went back, did a little bit of research, came back to him. Here's my new idea. He's like, no, no, that's not going to work. You should read some more books. I was like, uh, okay. It's got a little bit busy. Had to hold that one off. Uh, coming into the beginning of this year, I was like, I really want to get published as an undergraduate student. So I uh, met with a professor here named Tom Doe, and he, uh, he told me about his research group. And he was like, oh, we're trying to detect uh, malicious activity on IoT devices using uh, data analytics. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I'll do that. And uh, that's why I'm here, giving you this presentation. So uh, going over our presentation, we're going to talk about our team. We're going to go and talk about the devices that we used, our uh, strategy and philosophy for building our solution. Uh, we're going to do a little introduction to machine learning, and uh, then we're going to have a little conclusion at the end. Uh, so our principal researcher uh, is Tom O. He's with the Department of Information Sciences and Technology. Uh, he's an extended uh, CSEC faculty member, and uh, his role on the team is to sort of organize and direct everything. Uh, additionally, he's an awesome resource to go to to learn how to actually do academic research, how to write the papers and all of that. Uh, we have me, I already talked about me. We have Ohan Philbach, who is another student here at RIT. Uh, he's heavily affiliated with all the clubs, specifically RC3, uh, where he's the web admin for them. Uh, we have William McDonald, another security student. Uh, he's also heavily affiliated with RC3. We have Tapan Ajimira, who is uh, part of the computer science department here. Uh, he specializes in uh, data analytics, and so he sort of replaced time for me, and now I go to him for all my questions, and he's been a, a real big help to me. And then, of course, we have our sponsors, ETRI, the Electronics uh, and Telecommunications Research Institute based out of South Korea. And so we have uh, Young Ho Kim and uh, Jiang Yo Kim, who we work closely with, and they're part of the mobile security research section and information security research division. And uh, they provide the funding and made this whole project possible. So thank you to, for that. Uh, so coming into this research, I uh, came across this quote that suggests that it is best practice to review our logs every day. Uh, I know I personally don't do that. By a show of hands, how many of you guys do that? Yeah, uh, not, not too many. A couple, OK, that's cool. Uh, but most people don't. So then you think, well, will everyday users of IoT devices check their logs? And uh, the answer to that is absolutely no. They probably will not. Uh, so that's where our research starts. We want to use machine learning to analyze the logs and uh, sort of get rid of that and have the machine do it for people. So uh, goals with this research is to find a way to protect IoT devices. And of course, we want to use machine learning to do it because that's a cool thing right now. Uh, we needed to narrow our goals for our research a little bit more. So we decided to particularly focus on IoT devices uh, that consumers are going to be using. So cameras, DVRs, routers, those kinds of things. These happen to be like the number one culprit in uh, uh, IoT botnets right now. Uh, we'll look at that a little bit down the line. And so uh, then we're like, OK, uh, well, we don't want to protect against all malicious activity. That, that's kind of a really big, ambitious goal. So let's narrow it down and specifically focus on botnets. And we chose uh, Mirai, since it's been really big. It's in the news and everything. And we had some previous research done by Joel Margolis, who, uh, who wrote a pretty in-depth paper that's now published on uh, IEEE on uh, the inner workings of Mirai. And uh, when we're looking at Mirai, we're like, OK, we, have, uh, we don't want to be on the devices themselves. So let's look at network traffic. What are the main components of Mirai? And the random internet-wide scanning is one of them. That might be a little bit harder to detect. Uh, but the Telnet brute force with dictionary attacks, that's the primary exploitation device for this uh, botnet. That should be pretty easy to detect. Uh, and then, we, of course, you have DDoS through all kinds of flooding. Uh, techniques, but we don't. We would like to detect it before it's uh, a slave to a botnet and uh, causing damage. So, uh, looking at our devices, 
Uh, some previous research suggests that uh, routers and cameras uh, were the biggest component in the uh, Mirai botnet. And so uh, we got a hold of our uh, D-Link DCS930L. And uh, this thing is uh, pretty horrible. Uh, it's had all kinds of uh, unauthenticated remote access uh, to it. Uh, there's all kinds of CVEs. I think there's even a Metasploit module for it at this point. Uh, so that's not good, but it's really good for what we're doing. Uh, we had a stray cam, uh, but uh, that got bricked, so we don't have that anymore. Uh, we have a router. We have the D-Link 850L. Uh, it's very similar to the, uh, uh, the camera. It is also not good. Uh, we have a DVR, which is a digital video recorder. You'll connect your cameras to this and it'll record things. And I think that company is called a Wasu or something like that. Um, it's, uh, it's the best seller on uh, Walmart right now, and it also isn't good. And then we have a uh, Lutron Cassetta Wireless, and uh, uh, it's a light bulb, and we had it, so why not use it? So now we're going to go over the overall top topology. This is a really high-level overview. Uh, so you'll have your users and your adversaries that are connecting to uh, either the network or the device. A lot of cameras are just directly connected to the internet. And so they'll connect to the network or the device. And uh, we wanted to separate non-IoT devices from IoT devices, protecting laptops and servers and clients and everything. That's a, that, that's a whole different problem. Uh, we just wanted to focus on IoT devices. So between the, uh, the internet and the network, and the IoT devices lives our solution, which is currently a Raspberry Pi. We wanted a really tiny thing that we could give to consumers and uh, uh, be good there. So uh, all our IoT devices live behind that. It collects traffic in between uh, the internet and the IoT devices, all ingress and egress, and it pumps all that traffic to a remote machine learning infrastructure, which uh, does all the processing, determines if the, uh, the, everything's, if, it's, if the traffic's malicious or not, and then it talks back to the Raspberry Pi and sets up defenses. So now we're going to look at the individual components in a lot more depth. At the front, we have the traffic processor, which is the brain for the entire operation. Uh, this is going in and collecting all ingress and egress traffic associated with the devices. Uh, we originally wrote this in Python, and uh, it was just collecting individual features from the packets themselves. But uh, we found out that uh, when we wanted to collect more uh, complex features, like how much congestion is on the network when this specific packet is received, we're like, ah. Oh, uh, well, that, that's harder. Let, what, what kind of data structures do we know of? And we're like, ah, this is too hard at this point. So I was talking about this, and a friend suggested using Bro. And I was like, I know Bro. So we scrapped all of our code and replaced it with Bro, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. And uh, uh, later on, we plan on implementing a signature-based uh, IPS IDS system. So we'll generate signatures on our machine learning infrastructure, forward it down, and we'll have the firewall and the signatures to go over the traffic. Uh, the feature extractor, so this is, uh, this is where Bro really shines. Uh, Bro has a bunch of different protocol analyzers that'll uh, pump out uh, different logs depending on what you wanted. Uh, so you'll have like HTTP logs with all the features associated with HTTP, SSH, file, DNS, ICMP, those kinds of things. Additionally, Bro comes with a really complex but also really powerful scripting language. And uh, companies like CrowdStrike develop things for this, and you'll find things like Tor traffic analysis and uh, DNS sinkholing and things like that. Uh, we were particularly interested in auth brute forcing because, you know, the, the, the Telnet brute forcing from Mirai. So uh, Feature Extractor extracts everything, puts into logs, and then that forwards up to our remote machine learning infrastructure, which uh, should not be living on the, uh, the, the network. It'll be off somewhere else. Uh, maybe if someone chooses to sell the product, they, they'll be running this thing. Uh, at the front, we have Logstash, which is where we're receiving the logs. Logstash comes with three components. It has inputs, filters, and outputs. Inputs, you have different plugins that you can put in. Uh, I think most people use FileBeat, uh, but you could use Dropbox if you wanted to, all kinds of different things to get the logs into Logstash. Then Logstash uses filters to take the unstructured data and put it in a structured form, which is great for our feature samples. And then it has outputs, which does the same as inputs, but the other way, and you have plugins for that too. And so we send all of our samples to Elasticsearch. And uh, Elasticsearch is basically a, a really fast database that uh, is uh, super optimized for holding all kinds of logs. And uh, you can go there and you can search for the different features that you want and build different feature sets to test with your classifier. So we send those, we export those as a CSV. We send those over to our classification system. We haven't decided exactly how that's going to work. We don't know if we want to use one classifier to do all the traffic. We're not thinking that's the best idea. We might do multiple classifiers for each, uh, e each device. Uh, you could do classifiers for each individual application or protocol. Maybe that's the way to go. Uh, that's, that's part of the ongoing research project, product, and we're going to figure that out. 
So eventually that's going to pump out a uh, answer as to whether or not that traffic is malicious or benign. And it's also going to give us a confidence level. Uh, and so that's forward on to our firewall database, which is probably gonna be, part of it's gonna live on the machine learning infrastructure, part of it's gonna live on the device itself. Uh, it takes that decision as well as its value of confidence. If it was high enough, it's gonna generate a firewall rule and uh, send it back down to the, uh, the, the device and be like, hey, uh, this IP address, this domain, no, don't let that in, that's not good. Um, and then of course, if we were wrong about our prediction and uh, it, it actually caused a lot of havoc on the user's network, they're gonna be able to uh, look at the alert that we generate for them and uh, revert the rules so that it does not affect their network. Uh, all right, so now we're gonna go through a uh, brief overview of machine learning. So I decided to start with uh, talking about the differences between supervised learning and unsupervised learning. So with uh, supervised learning, we're going to have a defined set of features. So in this case, we have an is, white, uh, is IP whitelisted, is the domain blacklisted, the port, the protocol, et cetera. Uh, and then the, the key here is that you're gonna wanna know what your data is. Is, your, is this particular set of features malicious? Is it benign? And you're gonna wanna append a is malicious label to that uh, set of features. And uh, that's gonna be either true or false based off of what you know. And uh, if you're looking to popular algorithms for that, random forest is kinda cool and a lot of people are using it right now. We're not gonna get into that because that gets really complex really quick. Uh, then looking into unsupervised learning. You're gonna wanna use this when you don't exactly know what your data is. You don't know what's malicious, you don't know what's not malicious. And so you, it's, uh, you, do, you emit the is malicious label and instead you let the model search for different clusters of points on its own. And so uh, once you have these different clusters formed, you can search the data for different similarities, you can look for patterns, and you can now uh, identify the outliers on the, uh, on the graph. And uh, if you're looking for an algorithm there, you're gonna to wanna to use isolation force. That's a, that's a pretty cool one right now. And it has a really cool visualization if uh, you look up some pictures of that. Uh, so we're particularly interested in classification. There's two different types of uh, machine learning. There's regression, which is predicting a value, and then classification, which is determining if something is or is not a particular object based on the provided information about that something. That's kind of, uh, that's kind of uh, abstract. So looking at an example, we have a large quantity of packets. We wanna train this model with this large quantity of packets. So we tell the model which of the packets are malicious, which ones are not. And then, we, uh, and then when we give it new packets that it's never seen before, ideally it should be able to tell us if it's malicious or not. And so we provide the classification model with these features and it, uh, it, it does all the math and everything. And then we have our results. Uh, some some uh, got shoes here uh, is that features must be numerical or innumerable. I was kind of thinking, oh, well, we can just give it an IP address or maybe some of the strings and it should be able to find some uh, problems there. But uh, it looks like uh, you want to choose uh, things that are more like Boolean. So is that uh, IP address whitelisted or does that, uh, does that string contain a malicious, is, is that string malicious or not? And then use Booleans and innumerable fields instead. Uh, so looking at feature selection, uh, our strategy behind this was to train the model as if it was a SOC analyst. And uh, if, you, if you're a SOC analyst here or incident responder, you kind of want to know what the normal traffic on the network looks like. Once you have an idea as to what the normal traffic is, you're going to start looking at the, you'll be able to quickly identify the abnormal traffic. Maybe a strange DNS request comes up. Maybe some protocol that you usually don't have running on your network is suddenly in your PCAP files. That's, uh, those are some not good things. So we're uh, starting to notice that if you train with a whole bunch of normal traffic with uh, some various uh, malicious traffic in there, uh, it tends to do a really good job at uh, figuring out what's malicious and what is not. Uh, some of the basic features that you'll find in these PCAPs, uh, so we're looking at the basic features that you'd find in PCAPs first. And so that's your source destination IP addresses, uh, application layer stuff, all that, uh, HTTP, all that. Uh, and then you can't really determine if the traffic's malicious based off of one packet. So we're often looking at the bigger picture. We wanna look at uh, the amount of packets over an interval of time. Is there a whole bunch of, there's like 10,000 telnet logins in the 10 seconds, that's probably an indicator that someone's performing a brute force attack. You'll look at TCP streams and you'll look at all kinds of other statistics. So we needed to train the model to also recognize these things. And uh, we had to do that by writing code to look at, uh, to generate these features for us using the data from the bro logs. All right, here's an example of binary classification. Uh, this is a really cool example where we have a bunch of rings some bolts, some nuts, and a bunch of scrap metal. And the idea here is that you're gonna to try to determine which ones are which. 
And so uh, you have these lines here that sort of separate the categories. These are called the boundary lines. And uh, it might be hard to see from the back there, but uh, you'll find that some of the things are in the other categories where they shouldn't be. And this is what makes machine learning and security incredibly difficult, is that you need to have close to 99.9% .9 accuracy. You need to be as close as to the top as possible, and uh, that, is, that is not an easy task to do. Uh, we have overclassification and overfitting of data. These are uh, some really big gotchas that I learned about. Uh, Overclassification is where uh, I sort of thought at the beginning you could just pump as many features in this thing as possible, and uh, it, it'll the more features the merrier. It'll figure out which ones are the best and be good to go. But uh, that's not the case. There's actually a sweet spot, and it's different depending on which problem you're going to try to address. Sometimes you need less features, sometimes you need more features, but there's a certain point where uh, you start to have negative impacts. And then you have overfitting of data, which is uh, that's going to be where you use too much training data to train your model. Your model is too trained, and it will only recognize your traffic. And when you throw it out in the wild, it flops and fails, and nothing good happens. And there's some, there's some uh, go-to ratios for that, like use 80% of your data to train the model, 20% to uh, test it, those kinds of things. Um, and then when we go to test our solution, uh, that's kind of hard to read, but... Uh, uh, one of our team members, uh, he set up a uh, Mirai C2 server on our research network, so uh, we, we can actually test with a legitimate version of Mirai. Uh, additionally, we plan on writing Python scripts to exploit different uh, components on the IoT devices themselves to generate traffic, and then we'll use this to actually uh, test our trained classifiers. So this is kind of the conclusion here. Uh, our goal is to create a more effective IPS IDS stack. And uh, we want to use machine learning to do that. Ideally, if you do this correctly, you'll be able to get an increased accuracy. You'll have less false positives. If they get down, if you, do, if you have such a low number of less positives, you can eventually automate your defenses and hopefully be able to just generate firewall rules to be like, hey, no, you can't, that, that, that's bad. You shouldn't be in here. Um, and then, of course, you have the potential to identify new threats that you haven't seen before. That's a, that, that's a, that's a cool ability to have if you can get to that point. But uh, that's really where, this is where our research is going to continue. Uh, we're looking to, or maybe we should try compl computing more complex features to train these algorithms. Maybe we should uh, focus on individual components, so looking at applications, devices themselves, trying to figure out what, uh, what uh, structure of classifier we want to do to have these things going. So uh, this work was supported by the Institute of Information and Communications Technology Promotion Grant funded by the uh, Korean government. And uh, Itri was a major contributor here. So uh, if you guys have any questions, I'm welcome to answer them now. Yes. So right now we're, we're taking it packet by packet. Well, Bro generate, have you used Bro before? Have, okay, so Bro will generate uh, logs for each individual application. And so we're taking those and we're combining them together in a format where we have uh, uh, traffic over a period of time as well as individual, individual uh, 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 packets. So a little bit of both. We're trying to get a variety of information over a period of time and the packets themselves. So, yeah. Yes. Uh, looking at that, I, I believe we're using R. I, I don't do a lot of the data analytics stuff, so looking at the machine learning, I am not a machine learning expert. I've been just learning it along the way, trying to bridge the gap between data analytics and security. Uh, I believe we're using R to do this, and I, there's a whole bunch of different libraries. I know with like, uh, there, there's something called scikit-learn that I'm seeing a lot of, and there's uh, something called the Bro Analyzer tool that allows you to convert your Bro logs into uh, Panda data frames and then push it through scikit-learn. So those are, those are some uh, more words for you to look up if you're interested in doing this kind of thing. Okay. Alrighty.